Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to Blue Rain Gallery's virtual artist lecture series. Today we are featuring Doug West, live from his Todos Santos studio. Doug has prepared a wonderful lecture for us entitled Reflections on a 40-Year Journey Through a Life Grounded in Art. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Doug West virtual studio tour from Todos Santos, Mexico. And Todos Santos is on the Tropic of Cancer, uh, down near the southern tip of the Baja. I'm actually on the Pacific Ocean here. My goal for this, uh, this presentation today is not so much to talk about what I've done over 40 years of being a professional artist, as much as to peel back layers for you so you'll have a better appreciation of the work involved, how things start and how they progress, how I make creative decisions to reach the final point where you see something hanging on the wall and you won't just think, gosh, I wonder how we did that. Um, and then I also want to share some things that I feel are uh, common among uh, all of us as creative beings that are really central to taking risks and um, making art for me happen, making things happen in your lives as well. So with that, come on in and I will show you here uh, my studio, which is located on the lower level of my home. Um, this studio is actually pretty small in comparison with other studios that I've had. It's 12 feet wide, 30 feet long, and the length is really important because it allows me to stand back from my easel and make creative judgments after I've been spending hours up close working on detail. Sometimes I can work on a lot of detail and really not get a sense of what I've created until I can stand back and look. Other times I really need to put color on, come back and look, put more color on, come back and look. In terms of working in the small space, this is what enables me to do it. This is on wheels. It stores my paintings vertically, even when they're wet, so they're not touching. It separates them, but it keeps things tidier. Right now I have a number of pieces up mainly just as a display of work that's currently underway for my October show. I think it's October 9th at Blue Ring Gallery in Santa Fe. So here's my easel. This is a piece of Pedernal Peak. And um, this is my palette. This is where I mix color. And uh, it's actually a sheet of glass with white paint underneath. And all of my oil paints are spread around the periphery. Uh, basic colors and I do all of my color mixing here. So with this segment finished with the video Gives you a feeling for the studio and the space. I'm going to stop and now we'll switch to the live uh, talk If any of you know uh, The tarot deck the first card in the tarot deck is the fool and my idea was to put that image up and talk about that we all share the adventure of life in terms of, like this, unexpected events <laughs> happening. Um, and the fool, to me, symbolizes also very much the journey of an artist because we face a blank canvas repeatedly and we have to reinvent ourselves in, uh, in the moment. And we all do that in changing jobs, uh, if the, we change a relationship, or like me, move here to New Mexico, it's a reinvention. And the image of the fool is, is really wonderful. It's a young man with a uh, knapsack over his shoulder and all of his worldly possessions in it. And he's about ready to step over a cliff, but his head is up in the clouds. And that to me has, uh, signaled a number of major events in my lifetime. It's something we all have in common as creative beings. We have to face change, but also 
sometimes it leads us off in really different directions. And um, when I was quite young in, in high school, out of the blue, my mother gave me for a major Christmas present a box of oil paints. I never, I never had touched a brush before that but I became enthralled in making seascape paintings uh, at home. I'd stay up until two in the morning just because I got lost in the process. And concurrent with that, I attended a high school, uh, whole school assembly where the art teacher put up a visual of Picasso's La Guernica. He preceded this visual with a shot of a dead German soldier that he had taken during World War II. And it was a side view of the face close up. It was somewhat maimed. And he tied it to an image in La Guernica by Pablo Picasso. And that painting documents the um, bombing of that small village during the Spanish Civil War. And down in the corner, was that soldier's face uh, in, in abstract. And it, it just, something snapped in me in terms of realizing the visual power of art. Uh, that began a journey for me. And I went to USC for college. Um, my second year of college, I happened to take a class in life drawing, and the instructor's name was Mort Demonstein. He was not on faculty, he was there only in the evenings teaching a class. And his first class, he spent 30 minutes talking about his passion for art, what uh, the lifestyle of an artist meant to him, how it was a daily renewal, a daily investigation, a daily journey. And um, it was like he was whispering in my ear in the same way that the impact of that painting that I witnessed of uh, Picasso and the, and the symbolic message of, uh, of the power of art to communicate. Um, that on the basis of that, it started me thinking about um, getting a degree in art. And in fact, I did declare a major uh, I, in ceramics. Uh, much to my family's chagrin, I came home and announced I was getting a degree in ceramics. And I clearly remember my uncle saying, what, USC has ceramics? Do they have basket weaving too? <laughs> but um, it started my journey. And from there, I went to Hawaii, got a, a, a teacher's credential, taught uh, art for the Army. And um, my wife at the time and I got island fever and decided to move to New Mexico. Uh, just really, I might as well have thrown a dart at a map. I saw a, an image of backpacking equipment in the Pecos Wilderness, located the Pecos Wilderness on a map at the, uh, the library, and thought, wow, Santa Fe's next door. Santa Fe has a ski area. I haven't skied in 10 years. Let's go there. Um, so that's what I'm talking about, coincidence in life. Sometimes things unfold be before us that we don't realize the power of in the moment, except maybe we get a gut feeling that, uh, well, for me, Santa Fe was high altitude. It was uh, a four season climate that I'd never experienced before. It was the Southwest that I'd always wanted to see. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be a studio potter. I thought I might be a teacher and it, but it opened up the world of art in terms of the art galleries that are in Santa Fe, even back then in the uh, mid 70s. So we moved there. As a, you know, as young people will do, not really knowing how long we'd be there, not knowing what it would unfold. Uh, my daughter Sasha was born there in 1975. I had a job unrelated to art and I started making silkscreen prints in the evenings. This actually was 
my first, one of my first prints, and it's called uh, Mother Earth, Father Sky. And this was, at this stage, it was nothing more than a hobby for me. Well, a hobby turned into a 25-year career. And um, I, it enabled me to support my family, uh, enabled me to put my daughter through college, and at the end of it, I would have put this image up as well. Uh, about 2009, I got a phone call on my studio out of the blue from a lady in Seattle saying, I represent the Postal Service. Um, would you consider letting the image be used as a stamp? And I said, well, of course. <laughs> What's it for? And she said, New Mexico statehood. Um, so... It took forever for that to happen. I signed a contract, got a check, and then cooled my heels for about two and a half years. In fact, I would occasionally tell people that this was coming up, and then after so long not hearing a word from them, I thought, gee, maybe the whole thing fell through, and uh, that's gonna be a great embarrassment. <laughs> but the stamp did happen in 2010. And no, two thousand was it ten or twelve? Two thousand twelve took that long for for it to come to fruition. About that time, the print market. I'd been hand making my own prints for twenty five years. It, the prints were not selling as rapidly, and I really, at that point, had also mastered the medium, and there were there was not a lot of investigation left for me. I wandered into galleries in Santa Fe in 2009, 2010, thinking, well, uh, perhaps I can find new representation. I started to paint, and I wandered in to the galleries, mainly to see what other artists were being represented there, and moreover, without announcing myself, just to see how people treated me. And uh, when I went into Blue Rain, um, Dolsel was there, and we struck up a great conversation. I mentioned that I owned a gallery in Arroyo Seco near Taos, and he asked me my name. He was familiar with my work. He said, come in and meet Leroy Garcia. Um, and I talked with Leroy, and he said, well, yes, we would like to represent you, but no prints. We want nothing but paintings. And I'll give you a show in nine months. Go home and, and get to work. Well, here's the deal about reinvention. And the, and the fool card is tied to that. Um, the fool in the tarot is a zero card. It's, it's unlimited poten potential. It's also chaos. The next card, which I would have displayed, is the magician. Because in the real world, you have to pull together loose elements and put everything into an organized whole. And that's really what I do, what I've always done in my career and what I do now with painting. But that process of changing from being a printmaker to being a painter was like what we all go through. We face the unknown um, and sometimes coincidences happen that are gifts. Um, this certainly was an opportunity for me, so I started working on my show, and it was such a stretch for me creatively that three months into working on it, I called up Leroy and said, I've got to have lunch with you and we need to talk. And I said, Leroy, I don't know if I can do it. Um, I was having that much difficulty with mixing color. And that's really something I thought was a given for me as a printmaker. I knew how to nail a scene, how to nail a lighting condition, a mood, uh, to convey the, the beauty that I saw in the landscape in New Mexico. And uh, Leroy said to me, look, we're in it with you for the long run. I know you can do it. Go home and work some more. <laughs> So that was a great opportunity for me, and um, it's been really a wonderful relationship ever since. I'm going to show you some paintings that are underway for my show in um, October, and I'm going to try to weave in some things about how I work, 
so that you get a grasp of how things start and how they're finished. This piece of Petternall Peak, um, I, what I want to show you with this is when I work in my studio, and I'm a studio artist, really, I don't go out in the field uh, to paint because, well, principally because when I was a printmaker, I was tied to a big silk screen, a drying rack with 50 shells for drying the paper as I printed editions. And so what that allowed me was two things. It allowed me to develop a style in a void. Uh, I, I really taught myself printmaking as I went because remember my degree was in ceramics. Um, so I reinvented myself as a two-dimensional artist interpreting what I loved and that was the beauty of New Mexico once it seeped into my soul. When I worked in the studio, I have to rely, particularly now uh, a thousand miles away for 1,500 miles away from New Mexico, I use photographs that I've shot. So here are two photographs that were the basis for the painting. I'm gonna stand out of the way in a moment so you can see it, but here's a cloud of the Baja, and it is somewhat mirrored in the cloud that you see behind you in the Pedernal piece. Here is a photograph of Pedernal, and the point being that this, these became this, the, the genesis of my inner vision of what the potential for the scene was. And this cloud with a, a sunset uh, striking it defined the lighting condition. And so I amped up light flooding across this plane. And this uh, is enough so that people, when they see this, will know the location. Petternal is a, a, a signature butte right behind Abiquiu, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe country near uh, Ghost Ranch in uh, northern New Mexico. So that gives you a piece of that. This also, it's for my show in October. And I've done a lot of this recently of using um, florals to create a great sense of depth of space. Because to me, the beautiful thing about being out on the land is if you are with people that you uh, love and, and enjoy the company of, or if, as I said, if you're alone, to me, nature has a solace um, and particularly nature in the Southwest because you can see a limitless horizon line. Uh, having grown up in Southern California near the ocean, having lived on the ocean in Hawaii and then moved to New Mexico, um, I, when I first got to New Mexico, I thought, well, it's an experiment. I don't know if I can ever live away from the ocean. It turned out that I could. And the reason I could is because you can see so far in New Mexico that the air is so clear at altitude near Santa Fe and, and up to Taos. Um, the high altitude amplifies the colors because you're higher up and there's not as much atmospheric uh, haze. And so the idea of, of uh, interpreting nature and landscape in New Mexico as a very deep space experience has always been part of my work and always been part of uh, what I will sum up as sort of my message. But I've found that I really enjoy the challenge of interpreting florals uh, as a creative uh, challenge in paint because of the light and the shadow and then also in this kind of environment. Let me see if I can light this up a little bit more. Yeah, that helps. Um, although I've got my shadow over here. Oh, well. <laughs> um, and, and I want to say also that pain is a process, that things unfold as I work, as I observe the piece in its progression. When I 
painted the whole back of this, the whole landscape, and then started painting the flower, I realized, well, light striking here with the flower, and the shadows that I have over here are in the wrong placement, so I had to repaint that. I looked at the painting and realized I had trees all in this gap here, and that it would be much more powerful a suggestion of space if I can uh, continue this wash with water back to this point here. Um, so that's the fun of painting. That's the fun that you, I make decisions as I go. This piece, probably from start to finish, took me about, it's not quite done, but about a month's time. It's of the hills near Chimayo, and I've got a hollyhock flower, which are so typical in uh, northern New Mexico, and particularly near Taos, uh, as a summer adornment and gardens, and uh, they're quite beautiful. And they do, even down here uh, in Todos Santos and the Baja Peninsula, I've seen them um, as volunteers, so that's fun. Okay, now I'm uh, ad-libbing and filling in space a little bit. Uh, I painted this theme once before. Let me get out of the light here. Um, this is the, uh, Bel uh, the Valdez Valley near Taos, uh, very near Arroyo Seco, where I have my art gallery. And this is a rough end. Typically how I work is I'll do, I'll, I'll stretch about 15 canvases of various sizes with no knowledge of, of foreknowledge of where I'm going to go with them. Um, then I sort through all of my photographs and I start finding ones that I think would be interesting to interpret, even if it's a tiny section of a photograph. That doesn't matter. I will use white paper to block off that section so I don't see any of the other information. And that can become the basis for composition. Then I draw with charcoal on the canvas. And the beauty of that is I can erase that charcoal line and redraw it. I can erase it just with a rag, rubbing the canvas. And also I can overpaint them once I get it. I can overpaint with oil paint. And I do that as quickly as possible in the first stage. And this is just a beginning. This has a lot more work to do. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this is all just washes down here. There's gonna be a lot of detail that goes into painting the sagebrush here, putting uh, pinyon trees on this, this um, embankment here. The, the, uh, the cottonwoods that are in bloom here in the fall are going to be detailed out. This, this sky will have clouds in it. It's just the beginning, but it becomes my point of departure. And oftentimes, if I feel like a painting like this is headed in the right direction, I will put it aside. Now, it can, it, here's what I do. I select my photographs. I draw in charcoal on every single one of my canvases until I've got all 15 of these uh, blank canvases, stretch canvases finished, or at least in terms of the composition. Then I start painting like this as quickly as possible. And my ob uh, object at this point is just to cover the canvas and, and try to capture the feeling that I have in my mind's eye of the scene. Then out of that whole group of 15 paintings that will comprise the body of a show, I will pick the weakest start, the hardest composition, the one that the has the most problems to solve because I don't want to get to the end of a six month uh, process and have to solve that problem last. I tend to save ones like this that have a successful feeling about them 
uh, to the end of my work cycle. And this is of that nature. I'm going to show you one more that's like that as well. This is a 40 by 60 canvas, by the way, just to give you an idea. Uh, the Tau Scorch is what we have here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, it is a live event, right? <laughs> more so than we thought it would be. Let me tip this up so you get a better view of it. Tau Scorch. Okay, now what I'd like to say, since I've got to fill in here, is that um, I work generally six days a week, about six hours a day, because painting takes a lot of concentration and it's like a meditation. That's about all I can do before my brain feels fried. So I usually get in the studio about 11 a.m. and I work until five. Now, the other thing I should say is that I might be in the studio and not paint at all, but I show up. I'm there during those times. And then particularly if I'm in a stage where I'm challenged, I work up <laughs> even 40 years into my career. Sometimes I have to sort of back into the process. It's a common thing with creative people that beginnings have a stage where it be, it's really hard. Uh, I like the drawing stage. I like the initial putting in paint stage. And then when it gets to the labor of problem solving, some of them are really tough. And, and I really, it takes an act of will to, um, to go on. And I do that with a sense of trust that I always will solve the problem eventually. My goal is, goal is always to do the best I can in the moment. And part of that for anybody that's an artist is the not, um, not being overly critical. You, you know, I, you have an idea in your mind's eye of how you want something to appear. And if it's not perfect, well, you know, if it's beyond my ability, I'm not going to say I can't show it. I, it's the best I can do for now, and I will do better later on. Um, I love the quote from Malcolm Gladwell's book, uh, Outliers. And it, well, it's not a quote, but it's a thesis of the book. And that is that if a person, and particularly working in solitary, spends 10,000 hours of working, you know, in other words, a large amount of time, uh, they reach a level of mastery. Well, what is mastery? To me, mastery is the ability to trust your intuition without the ego becoming um, a buffer. And so now I can mix color uh, at this stage in my career, just like that. Whereas when I went to Leroy uh, right prior to my first show and said, I don't know if I can do it, I needed to just stay with it. So that's a lesson in, uh, Facing change, which is that the card of the fool, and it's also the magician, and having the patience and the willpower uh, to do it. And for me, um, I've had moments in my career like that postage stamp, and like Leroy accepting my work, it's blurring is such an outstanding uh, body of other artists, stable of artists, and a beautiful gallery. I've had stages where I feel like I've had great luck, but I also believe that we make our luck once we have an opportunity and, um, and you have to be willing to reinvent yourself. This piece, again, I'm gonna show you a couple of photographs. 
I, I used to live in Taos and I would go riding along the edge of the Rio Grande Gorge uh, four or five times a week uh, it, on my mountain bike, weather permitting. And if it, the weather wasn't permitting, I'd go out there and hike even in blizzard. And this particular spot really was intriguing to me where there was, I painted this scene where there's this small juniper bush, and it's quite small, maybe three feet high, that fingers with dead branches sort of reaching up the length of the chasm of the Rio Grande Gorge Canyon, the Rio Grande flowing down below. So I've used this really pretty, pretty much literally in terms of how the light is washing across the canyon to strike the opposite wall, and it is part of it's in shadow. And that's what we have here, like flooding over here. This is in shadow down below. All of this detail is pretty nailed uh, down right now. Here's the Rio Grande flowing. And I really like how these, these yucca blooms define depth. Uh, I'm going to add more detail up on the, the west rim, the, the rim of the canyon here. Um, and these background mountains, and I'm going to detail out these flowers. So this painting's not done, but the, the meat of it is there for me. Here's another large piece. Say. <laughs> Again, Petronal Peak. Uh, near Abiquiu, and this also is a beginning of a painting. Um, I've taken my drawing of this, and uh, oh, I know what the problem is here, this will help. <laughs> um, so I uh, completed my charcoal sketch, and then I've done an initial one layer of paint, in this case, this is probably about six days of work, uh, and it's a beginning. But this beginning is so strong to me that, uh, as I said before, it's in the, the last kind of, of my rotations, uh, as opposed to, let me hold this one up. This has been roughed in. You can still see charcoal in here for these blooms on, uh, well, right in here in particular. Uh, this is very rough in here. This is a very rough beginning, and I'm not happy with these clouds. I have no underside, so this is a problem to be solved. But it gives you an idea of process, and it gives you an idea of, um, the journey that I go through. Uh, this is so much shorter than I intended because I had all these slides to put up. I'm going to just sum it up, though, by saying that 40 years, really the constant in my career for me has been um, to interpret the sacred spaces of New Mexico. And sacred to me, as I said before, is the beauty of being out on the land alone in a beautiful place and time, uh, whether it's shared or not, and um, trying to interpret that in a way that speaks to uh, a moment in time that's unique, a, a moment that feels uh, isolated, where you're not thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the future, you're just enjoying the beauty that surrounded you. And to me, that is what I've always found magical about New Mexico and what definitely fits um, its, its namesake as uh, the land of enchantment. And I'll, I'll also expand that out to be the Southwest in general. Um, and then lastly, I want to say that would, it, it's only appropriate. To me, as the artist, the collectors are the other half. It's, 
and people who appreciate art. It's a circle. And uh, I, it, it's, it's, there's something that's magical about that. I can pour the essence of my being into uh, what I think has been a pretty con uh, constant message throughout all of my career about my reverence for uh, nature and the beauty of nature. But the other half is the audience. And uh, I'm particularly thankful for people that have chosen to collect it, that where it also in some indefinable magic way speaks to who they are and what they want to represent as themselves within their home, what they choose to live with and uh, share with other people. So that's, that's pretty magical and I uh, have great gratitude for that. So thank you all so much for being here with us today. This is a new experience for us here at Blue Rain, uh, organizing something like this over Zoom and I know it's a new experience for Doug as well, at least um, in relationship to presenting his artwork. So Doug, thank you so much. Um, you were too. Uh, and uh, Denise, um, just my thank you as, again as well to you and Leroy and everybody at Blue Rain for uh, providing this opportunity. And I look forward to doing it again, maybe next time in person with a slide projector that I know will work. <laughs> Well, really, everyone who's joined us today, thank you. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces in this, um, in this meeting in the audience, and it's just really a pleasure to, um, to have your support while we're doing something like this. I hope, that, um, hope you all are enjoying the start to your summer, and um, hopefully we will see you soon. See you guys. <laughs> See you at my show in October. <laughs>